What is going on? It's Medicosis Perfect Schnellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. This is my anatomy playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the skin. We talked about epidermis, dermis, and hypodermis, and the layers in each. We talked about the cleavage lines of the skin, the creases of the skin, and today it's time to talk about skin appendages. Today we shall review hair, nails, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. Let's go. Please check other anatomy videos here on YouTube in a playlist called Anatomy. Functions of the skin, protection, thermoregulation, water balance, sensory organ, metabolic organ, and the skin is also an immune organ. From superficial to deep, epidermis, then dermis, then hypodermis. The epidermis has stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, stratum basale, which is standing on top of the basement membrane, then the dermis with the papillary layer, loose, reticular layer, dense, and then you have the hypodermis, which is superficial fascia. We talked about the cleavage lines of Langer, which are the cleavage lines of your skin, and these are important for surgeons. Then we talked about skin creases, which include tension lines, papillary ridges, which are the fingerprints, flexure lines, cleavage lines, see before, and stria. Stria gravidarum of pregnancy, stria of obesity, and purple stria of Cushing syndrome. The color of my skin is determined by genes which code for protein. Some of them are pigments, including melanin, carotene, and hemoglobin. I'm not saying all pigments are proteins, but many of them are. Melanin is made by melanocytes at the dermoepidermal junction. Carotene, epidermal cells and subcutaneous fat. Hemoglobin, the red blood cells. As you know, there are no blood vessels in the epidermis. You only find it in the dermis and below. Skin appendages. Let's talk about hair, nails, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. First, hair. Where do you find it? Almost everywhere in your body, especially scalp, axilla, and the pubic region. However, there is no hair in the palms of your hands or the soles of your feet. Your hair is made of a beautiful shaft, but if you go deeper, there is the root of the hair. What's the hair follicle then? It's the root plus the surrounding tissue. Next to the root of your hair, there is the erector pili muscle or the pili erector muscle. Erector means to erect, to straighten up. Pili from pilus, which means hair. I straighten up the hair. And this muscle has sympathetic innervation. It is especially prominent in cats, for example. When cats are scared, their hair will just stand up. There are two types of hair, primary hair or lanugo. This is the hair of newborns covering every part of their body. Later, this lanugo or primary hair will be replaced by your permanent hair. Hey, medicosis, after I shave, why does my beard grow again? Because when you shave, you cut this, a part of the shaft. But as long as the root remains intact, it will grow again. Next, we have nails. Here's the root, which you cannot see because it's hidden underneath the skin. And then there's the body of the nail and there's the free border because the other border is not free. Duh. Also, the two lateral borders are mostly not free. They are covered by skin. Just like you sleep on a bed, the nail is also sleeping on the nail bed. If you look closer at the nail bed, if the nail bed is pale, this could be a sign of anemia. And what's the most common cause of anemia? Iron deficiency, which is malnutrition. There is a fungal infection known as tinea, a fungal infection of the skin and mucous membrane. Unguium. Unguium means nail. When something is related to nails, we say ungal as an adjective. Next, sweat glands. I want you to remember that many of your sweat glands are supplied by the sympathetic cholinergic fibers, which is unique because normally sympathetic is adrenergic, which releases noradrenaline or norepinephrine, but not acetylcholine. Well, here's the exception. The sweat glands of your skin, the sympathetic nervous system, is using acetylcholine for the first time in history as post-ganglionic fibers. I know there are many types of sweat glands and this rule does not apply to every type of sweat glands. But just remember it this way if you're getting started. Your sweat gland is made of a beautiful duct which opens on the surface of your skin and the coiled part which is deep. Clinical correlation. If I have organophosphate poisoning, what will I get? I'll get dumbbells, diarrhea, urination, meiosis, bronchospasm, bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, sweating, salivation. Why am I sweating too much? Because I have very active sweat glands. 
Why is that? Because I have too much acetylcholine, organophosphate poisoning. The exact opposite is atropine. With atropine, I'm inhibiting the receptor of all of your acetylcholine. Your acetylcholine is toast. Your acetylcholine cannot function. Your sweat glands cannot function. And you'll be dry as bone without sweating. Next, sebaceous glands. You find them in the skin, but not in the skin of the palms of the soles. Sebaceous glands are especially prominent in the scalp and face. They secrete what? Sebaceous sebum. What is dandruff? Too much sebum. If you want to take it to the next level, study the disease known as seborrheic dermatitis. Inflammation of the skin, we have rayo, which means river, of sebaceous glands. Too much sebum out there. If you like this video, you'll also enjoy my renal physiology course and my high yields surgery course on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.